Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Turn to Psalms 32. We're going to be talking in Psalms 32. We're going to do some Bible by the wood stove. Okay. Psalms 32, verse 1. Remember, I'm a King James Bible believer. Make sure you have your King James Bibles out and you're following along. And, and I just wanted to use this to encourage you. I was doing this in my morning devotions and God put it on my heart and said, why don't you talk to the brethren about it? So here we are. Okay. So verse 1 says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Covered. Okay, brothers and Christ, not taken away, covered. In the Old Testament, when you had sinned, you had to get an animal sacrifice and take it to uh, the, the tabernacle or the temple, depending on what time period. Okay, and you had to do an animal sacrifice. And the animal sacrifices go all the way back to Adam and Eve. Okay, we talked about this. But the point is, is their sins are covered. In the book of Hebrews, it talks about how without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And it goes on to talk about the blood, that you think the blood of bulls and goats could take away sin. See, King David had the right words here by saying, covered. God used him and spoke through him. It's covered. It's not taken away. How do you get your sins taken away today, brother says Christ? We know. It's, you have to come to God broken and having sorrow in your heart for sinning against him. You see, some of the problem people have is they're not sorry for sinning against God. They're sorry about going to hell. Oh, you're afraid of hell. You're afraid of hell. I'm afraid of the person that can send me to hell. That's where the sorrow needs to be at, towards the person that can send you to hell. Remember what Jesus said? He said, fear not them that are able to destroy the body, but fear him who's able to destroy both body and soul in hell. You're not supposed to fear hell. You're supposed to fear him that's able to send you to hell. Okay? You need to have sorrow towards the God Almighty for sinning against him. Your personal sins. You confess both in prayer. I'm sorry. And you believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. You get told or read about what Jesus went through. His beard ripped out, beaten beyond recognition. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. He was nailed to a cross. All his blood was bled out. He bled to death. And that blood that, that was bled was God's blood. Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. And when he said it is finished, it is finished. How he died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. You acknowledge what he went through for you because of your sins. Not the world's sins as a whole, but your sins personally. You confess both in prayer. You ask God to save you. God looks down. He looks at the heart. Remember how we read a lot in the Bible? A lot of our studies always come back down to God's looking at the heart. It's a heart issue. He looks at the heart and says, and if you come to him, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. If you're in that condition, you came to God on his terms, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God's, right, God's blood has washed your sins away through his son Jesus Christ, washed your sins away, and Jesus' righteousness is imputed to you. That's how we get saved today, and our sins are washed away. And we can go into the spiritual circumcision made without hands, where the body and soul are circumcised, so our soul is now connected to Jesus Christ. He's our body. That's why we're called the body of Christ. He's our body. Okay, this, no matter what sin this body of flesh can do, because we're going to get into this a little bit more, we can't go to hell. We're not going to go to hell, and we're not going to get tossed in the lake of fire. You can't lose your salvation. You are sealed into the day of redemption. Now as we get into this a little bit, the next verse says, 2. Blessed is the man, once again, blessed, blessed, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. Now, brothers, this is Christ. For, this is for saved sinners, not lost. Saved sinners. There's still a cost to sin today, physically. The Bible says, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. When you're lost, the wages of sin is death. You're building up wages. You're earning damnation. Remember what Jesus said? Whose damnation is just for those who reject Jesus Christ. And continue putting the world first, the flesh first, the world first, Satan first. Remember he said, you're of your father the devil? 
and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a liar from the beginning and the father of it. And we're going to get into lying here. Okay. All right. We're going to get into lying. So you lust your father, you will do. Okay, you're of your father, the devil. Right? The lost world, the wages of sin, they're building up wages, their damnation is just, and when they stand before God through Jesus Christ, because Jesus is God, when they stand before Jesus Christ and answer to God at the great white throne, they're going to be tossed into the lake of fire. Death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast in the lake of fire. But brothers, says Christ, make no mistake. We have been freed from the lake of fire. We have been freed from that uh, condemnation. But there's still a physical consequence to sin. The Bible says, if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the capital S spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, ye shall live. It's not talking about eternal life. It's talking about down here. I've come across a lot of people, and even myself, I've come across brethren that have testimonies, but I see a lot of the lost world. When you're young, you think you're getting away with it, living after the flesh and everything. But when you see a lot of these elderly, older people, uh, they're not doing so good health-wise. Why? Because when they were younger, they were living after the flesh. My health, I praise the Lord, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's not perfect. It's not great. It is what it is. But my childhood, I lived after the flesh growing up. A lot. There's consequences. There's physical consequences. And here's another thing. The Bible talks about that in the book of Hebrews, how that God will chasten you as a father would a child to get you back on the right path. He's not trying to utterly destroy you. How dare you get off the right path? Like I'm talking about my walk with the Lord. There's times I've gone off to the left. There's times I've gone off to the right. There's times I took my eyes off Jesus Christ and I put it on the world, the flesh, or was distracted by Satan, the three enemies, and I wasn't watching where I was going and I tripped and whoosh, face down. When God chastens us, it gets us back up. There's times that God doesn't chasten you. He reaches down with his hand and says, let me get you back up. There's times I repent and forsake just like that. I'm quick about it, praise the Lord. There's sometimes I start holding on to that sin. Would King David say, if I hold iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. Jesus said, if any man come after me, he must deny himself. You can't be holding iniquity in your heart. Deny himself, pick up his cross daily, and follow me. When we fall flat on our face, you get the, God through the Holy Spirit I hope I'm not going too fast, but through the Holy Spirit, the Bible says the Holy Spirit bears witness with our conscience, our spirit, and convicts us. And we can repent and forsake and get it back out of our life and get back to our walk with the Lord, and there won't be any chastening. Okay? But the thing is, there's some brethren, and I've been there, I have testimonies where I held things in my heart. I didn't want to let it go, especially as a newly saved God starts cleaning up your life, and you're like, but God, I don't want to let go of that. And God's like, you got to let go of that. I, but I don't want to. I'm telling you to let go of that. No, God. Whoosh, smacks me right upside the head. God chastens you as you would a child. Let go of it. It's not worth it. Okay. Uh, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Cleaning up your life. Okay. There's chastisement in your life. There's a cost of sin today. And here's another thing that a lot of us don't think about, brothers and Christ. What about the judgment seat of Christ? Right. And, the, and first, second, third John, it, I think it's first John that talks about if, if, it's a Bible if, if we confess our sins, and this is addressed to saved sinners, if we're saved and all sins forgiven, why do we still need to confess our present tense sins? Because there's still a consequence down here. And there's a consequence up there when we get to heaven at the judgment seat of Christ. We'll lose out on rewards. Remember what it talks about? Gold, uh, gold, silver, wood, hay, and stubble. Our, work, our good works, our bad works are thrown on the fire. If, if we confess our sins, God is faithful to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I want to believe that if we can get it taken care of down here, we won't be answering for it at the judgment seat of Christ. If you repent, forsake, and get your heart right with the Lord, we won't be having to answer for it at the judgment seat of Christ. 
We might miss out on blessings. It's a whole other study. We can miss out on rewards. Okay. But and we might still end up losing rewards. Like I said, I can't be 100% on it. But the whole motivation is, is that judgment seat of Christ. We need to live a life of Christ. We need to live for the Lord. Because okay? we're going to have to stand before Jesus Christ one day and answer for our life as a Christian. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity. But now I showed you the right way, brothers of Christ. Our walk with the Lord, your personal walk with the Lord, the right way is to repent, forsake, and get back to your walk with the Lord. Get your heart right with the Lord. Make sure that this is being hid in your heart and you're living it. But what's the next half of that verse? It says, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Okay, guile, deception, sneakiness. And now you say, well, does that have to do with it? Well, how many times have you heard people try to justify sin? They don't want to repent. They don't want to forsake. There's the big one. They don't want to forsake it. So they try to find a way to justify it. They try to use guile. We talked about this before with the lost world. The lost world tries to use guile to get into heaven. They try to deceive God. They try to see. They deceive them. They try, they can't deceive God. They try. That's why I said they try to deceive God. They wind up deceiving themselves, and they try to deceive everybody that's around them. And some people they deceive. Some people that like us that are saved, we can see right through them. They're trying to find a back door. They're trying to get saved some other way other than what God said. This is the only way. There's one way to heaven. I told someone this. I said there's one way to heaven. I told this to a guy at the gas station. I said, there's one way to heaven, and there's a million, billion, trillion, quadrillion, as far as you want, ways to, get, to go to hell. And I gave him a gospel tract. This will show you the one way to get to heaven, the only way to get to heaven. Because he was talking about, he feels like this life is hell, and, and this, and we got into it. There's only one way to get to heaven. Now, brothers of Christ, for today, for us, for instruction righteousness, how many times do you come across brethren that try to use guile to justify sin? Okay. How many of you heard this saying before? It's under the blood. I have. How many of you heard this? Oh, God will forgive you. I have. You know what, brothers and Christ? Those two things sound innocent, and they kind of sound innocent because it's true. We're not going to go to hell. It's under the blood. No matter what sins you commit as a saved sinner, no matter how many times you fall to the left or the right, how many times you fall flat on your face, you will not go to hell and then the lake of fire. It is under the blood. But I told you there's consequences for sin down here. You can wind up losing uh, rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. But here's the thing that always gets me with these people that are trying to use guile. Here's where guile comes in. They are present tense in the sin or they're planning to sin, and they use those as excuses. It's under the blood. Oh, God will forgive me. I'm ashamed to say it, but my flesh has tried to deceive me time, plenty of times by saying, oh, you can do it just one more time. Oh, come on, it's been years. You can do it one more time. Whatever your uh, addictions are, whatever your temptations are, everybody has their faults that they struggle with, okay? Come on, you can do it one more time. God will forgive you. Plant, like saying God will forgive you as your, plan, as your flesh is trying to plan sin. I've been guilty of this. I'm not going to try to act like I'm above that. But brothers and sisters Christ, we're not supposed to have guile. We're not, trying to, we're not supposed to try to deceive God. Deceive ourselves and deceive those are around us when it comes to iniquity, when it comes to sin. Okay? When someone is present tense in sin... Their first response should never, and I repeat, never be, it's under the blood. I'm, I'm telling you right now, a lot of people that I come across like that, I don't believe they're saved. They're part of the easy believism. They tried to find a back door. They tried to find some other way into heaven. And they think they're saved. It's under the blood. I can live however I want and do whatever I want. When you catch me in present tense sin, I will never, never respond with, so it's under the blood. Like, no big deal, it's under the blood. Who are you to judge me? Right. And brothers and sisters in Christ, our first response should never, I repeat, never be, oh, God will forgive you. 
while you are present tense in sin or planning to sin, future sin, you know? Like in the Old Testament, uh, they used to get that lamb ready for some sin that they planned to do, so then they'd go do the animal sacrifice to cover that sin, but they had that animal ready because they planned the sin. They have that it's under the blood ready when they plan to sin. Oh, well, God will forgive you ready when they plan to sin. Okay, be careful about that. If you catch me in sin, the first thing you need to do is, did you repent? Did you take it to God in prayer and repent? The second thing is, did you forsake? The third thing is, did you get you back to your walk with the Lord? Get back to prayer, get back to Bible reading, get back to fellowship with the brethren. Those are the three steps we should be following, brother says Christ, not, oh, don't worry, God will forgive you. The only time we should be coming back with that is if that person, because there's times in my life where I've screwed up and I've repented, I've forsaken, I've gotten my heart right with the Lord, I got my walk going with the Lord again, but every once in a while, that past sin keeps nagging at me, keeps poking at me, keeps grabbing me and pulling me sometimes, just pull, trying to pull me down. That's when you come to him, brother, sister Christ, and say, hey, A, it's under the blood, we're not going to hell. That's what it means to say it's under the blood. But B, did you confess it? Did you repent? Uh, forsake and get your heart back. It's God, God is faithful to forgive us of all our sins if we confess our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's gone, brother. Let it go. Let it go. That's when you bring in, hey, God, God forgave you. God will forgive you or God has forgiven you. Let it go. That's the only time we should be bringing it up. But when you, you realize with a lot of people, when you go to try to uh, correct them present tense in their sins that profess to have a profession of faith. I'm a Bible believer. I'm a Bible believing, God fearing man or woman, a Christian man, Church of the Living God. A lot of times when you conf confront some of those people and you correct them, because remember, all scriptures given by inspiration of God is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Okay, but for reproof and for correction, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished into all good works, a perfect heart. I always say perfect heart. Why? Because where does the Bible say we're supposed to hide his word? In our heart. You know, there's some brethren that get upset because I keep quoting that verse to them. Why? Because it's stuck up here and it's not making it down here. You can quote that verse to me a million times. I love that verse. It's a good encouragement to make sure I'm hiding God's word in my heart. I want a perfect heart before the Lord. All right? But correction, when you go to correct them, their attitude is, is it's under the blood. Oh, God will forgive me. They try to use guile to justify sin. Here's another big one. They misuse liberty. Brothers says Christ, they misuse liberty. Is that not going on, going around in the body of Christ today? Absolutely. I can sin, just hide it under liberty. They're trying to use guile to deceive God. They're trying to use guile to deceive the brethren around them. And in the process, they're deceiving themselves. Remember what the Bible says? Deceiving and being deceived. Okay. The Bible says when it comes to liberty, we're not supposed to use liberty as an occasion for the flesh. Why? Because liberty is what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. He died for our sins. Therefore, we're not, we're not given a free pass that we can sin all we want now. We're not to use that liberty as an occasion to the flesh. We fail the Lord, we repent, we forsake, we get our heart back right with Him, get back to walking with Him again. We take sin seriously. But you've got brethren that are trying to hide sin under liberty. They're trying to use guile, deception. They're trying to be sneaky. And they're trying to throw holidays under liberty. Uh, Hollywood movies, TV shows, video games have been thrown. I've talked to brethren that tried to throw those under liberty. Um, anime which is just child porn, stay away from it. They tried to throw that under liberty, satanic style music under liberty. I had someone professing to be a sister of Christ tell me that was trying to hide her drunkenness and her drug addiction under liberty. You know what the nature of perversion is, brother and sister Christ? Is it gets worse and worse and worse. Liberty is what Jesus Christ did, not what we are doing. It's not a choice that we make. Liberty is what Jesus Christ did. For us on the cross. That's why the Bible says the liberty that we have is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Right? Liberty is what Jesus Christ did. But people try to use guile today to deceive. People try to use guile today to get you away from this book. I was, I'll probably do another video on it, but talking to somebody about Yeshua, Yahashua versus Jesus Christ. I'm quoting the scriptures from a book that they claim to believe in, but they say that they still need to seek the real name, the real name. Because this is not, Jesus is the Greek name, and it's not the real name. They're trying to replace Jesus Christ. They don't believe in this book, yet they claim to believe in it. I'll do that in another video. But they're trying to use guile. The Bible says be careful because there's people going around going with good words and fair speeches, deceiving the hearts of the simple. And that's why, brothers and sisters Christ, I don't want you simple. This is the final authority, and you need to know this book like you should know this book. You need to be hiding this book in your heart. So when someone comes along with good words and fair speeches, oh, liberty is just a choice, it's just a choice, you can read in here and say, uh, no, it isn't. Liberty is what Jesus Christ did for us. Oh, you know, we're not supposed to be so judgmental. You know, you caught me in sin, and I'm going to continue in my sin because I love my sin. But you know, God will forgive us. We're not supposed to... It says, He is spiritual, judgeth all things, yet He Himself is judged of no man. Prove, Paul says, prove your own selves. Check whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Paul says, are we to sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How are we the dead to sin and live any longer therein? See, you keep going... Script. What that man saying is, law, is wrong. But if you don't know this book, if you're a simpleton, as we say, a simpleton, what happens? You're easily deceived. So we see here, Blessed is the man whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Now here's an example of somebody. King David's going to give an example. And this is how I feel and what I go through, and I've tried to explain it to you. When I start falling into temptations, when I start falling into sin, uh, getting distracted, doing things the world's way, not doing things God's way. Basically, when I'm not pleasing God, I'm falling to the left or the right, this is how someone's supposed to feel, a saved brother and sister in Christ is supposed to be. Verse 3, when I kept silent, when you're holding that iniquity in your heart as a saved sinner, when you think nobody's watching, nobody saw that, God didn't see it, I, I, I think I got away with it, and I'm, you're keeping silent. Remember, this is King David. Remember what he did. He committed adultery. What did he do? He sent Bathsheba back and tried to hide it and act like it never happened. Then next thing you know, Bathsheba's coming to him saying, I'm with child. Now it's right back in his face again. What do I do? What do I do? So he gets your hot Uriah the Hittite, her husband, to come home, and then tries to get her husband to be with her in the marriage bed so he can deceive people and God into believing that it's his child. He brought him back and he's like, okay, I got away with it. My sin is kept quiet, silent. I kept silent in my sin. What happened? Uriah the Hittite wouldn't go be with his wife. What he ended up doing? He ended up having a man murdered. And then he's like, that was hard. Every time I thought I got it taken care of, I'm good. And then what happened? Through Nathan the prophet, God spoke through Nathan the prophet and really just threw it right in King David's face. And what I believe King David's showing us is what he was going through through that whole time. Yes, he was trying to hide it and everything, but he was just, oh Lord, is God, what's God going to do? Did, did God see that? What, what's God going to do? I did something wrong. God's... It, when he keeps silent, look what he talks about. When he keeps silent, my bones wax old through the roaring of all the day long. We're supposed to have this err inside of us when we're in sin and wickedness, and it's just it's not right. I've talked about this before. You lose your, your you lose your joy. You lose your peace. When your walk isn't with the Lord, it starts going the way of the world, the flesh, the world, Satan. You don't feel right. You start feeling miserable. You start, you lose your joy. You lose your peace. There's something inside you that's trying, you're, the Holy Spirit bearing witness with your conscience, trying to cry out. You're doing wrong. My bones waxed old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. The Holy Spirit is given to us to open the Scriptures to us, but also to convict us, 
to bear witness with our, holy, uh, the, with our conscience and convict us. To the lost world, the, the laws of God are written on every man's heart. So they get convicted too. The laws are a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, but you and I are in Christ Jesus, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's heavy upon me. God gives you a chance to repent. Those of us who are doing wrong, we're miserable. That's why it always frustrates me when I see these professing Christians, these easy believers and everything, their, their life is just nothing but wickedness and sin, and they're happy. They're living it up. They have no conviction. There's no sorrow in their heart towards God for what they're doing. Now, don't get me wrong. There's brethren that I believe aren't right with the, God, with the Lord in ministry. And behind the camera, you can put on a great show. You can put all kinds of smiles behind the camera. But in their life, when their walk's not right with the Lord, I don't believe they have the, the joy and the, and the peace anymore. They're trying to hide it. Let's keep going. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer, Salah. Selah. You know how you get out of that? You know how you get out of that feeling of, is anybody watching? Did God watch? I, I listened to my flesh. It said God would forgive me, and I got into it, and did God see me? Yes, he did. You know he did. Okay, what's God going to do? The Bible talks about chastening. What's God, uh, uh, what am I supposed to do? Uh, what do you do? What's the next verse say? I acknowledge my sin unto thee. What do you do? Repent, brothers and sisters in Christ. Drop the pride. Drop the ego. Drop the bitterness. Drop uh, the anger, the hate, the lust. Whatever it is that's causing you to try to hold on to that sin in your heart, let it go. Repent. Come to God. Repent. What did King David do after... Nathan got on to him. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquities have I not hid. He didn't hide iniquity in his heart anymore. Brothers says Christ, come to the Lord. He has, he has a lot of mercy, a lot of grace, a lot of mercy. He will forgive. Come to him in a broken state. He will forgive. But what happens when you hide that in your heart? I was reading this, and it's like, I've been there. I've been where King David was. I've fallen off to the right and to the left, and I stayed there for a little while, and I was just, it was eating at me. What's God going to do? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That fear is there in someone who's saved and born again. That fear is there. What God, what's God going to do? You're starting to sweat. Oh, Lord, I'm out of fellowship with the Lord. I'm not doing right. I haven't prayed in a few days, and I really haven't touched my Bible in a week. Oh, Lord, what? and now you're starting to pray. Oh, Lord, what are you going to do to me, Lord? Like I said, that's what we talk about when we talk about that conviction. Where's the conviction? When you start pointing out sin in professing Christians' lives, where's the conviction? Most of the time, I don't get conviction. All I get is, who are you to judge me? It's under the blood. God will forgive me. God has forgiven me. While you're in the middle of the sin and you're still doing it, you won't let it go, but God has forgiven me. It's like, what? King David, it just eat at him. It was tearing him apart. That sin was tearing him apart. Brother, this is Christ. I've been there. I know what King David went through. I went through. I'm not talking about the adultery and having a man murdered. I'm talking about not being right with God. When your heart is not right with God, you know it. Don't try to lie, brother. Says Christ, I'm not going to try to lie. I, I'm not. My heart has not always been right with the Lord. And when it wasn't, you know it. The peace is gone. The joy is gone. Nothing seems right. You just something inside you is just squinting and you sweat. But let's keep reading. Verse 6, For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Now we read in the Bible where it talks, where it talks about seek the Lord, while, or that's Old Testament, seek the Lord, it's Isaiah I think, seek the Lord, Jeremiah, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. 
And then uh, for us, it says, now is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time to get saved. But Paul's always talking about sanctification. Get your heart right with the Lord. Are we to sin that grace may abound? Repent. Okay. Uh, John talks about it. He's faithful to forgive. If we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us of our sins. Get your heart right with the Lord. He's dealing with brethren, professing brethren, like especially in 1 and 2 Corinthians, Paul is. And it's like, get your heart right with the Lord. Okay. For this shall every one that is godly pray unto thee in the time when thou mayest be found. Brother, sister Christ, are you godly? Some of you might have been, I might be pricking some hearts here. Some of you might have been the ones that have fallen away to the right or the left. And you've kind of been staying there for a while. You want to be godly, but you're not really living too godly right now. It's not, it's not too late. You're still breathing, right? It's not too late. Repent, forsake, and get your heart right with the Lord. And you might not have to answer for it at the judgment seat of Christ. You might not lose rewards over it. Get your heart back right with the Lord. Amen. Surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come nigh unto him. The flood of great waters. You remember the flood? You remember um, Noah and the ark, where that door was. This is what it reminds me of, that's it, that door. When that door closed, it's too late. When God closed that door, and, and Noah and his wife, and Noah's three sons and his three sons' wives were the only ones on board. When God closed that door, it's too late. When it comes to the lost world, if anybody's lost, I doubt that they come to, but they come to this video, as long as you're breathing, it's never too late to get saved. But when you die in your sins, too late. Now to my brothers and sisters in Christ out there that we're talking about for us though, when it comes to living a life of Christ and our struggles with sin, okay, it's never too late to repent and forsake and get your heart right with the Lord as long as you're breathing. When He calls you up in death, or He calls us all together up in life, if we get to live to the sea, the catching away of the body of Christ, by then it's too late. You're going to have to answer to Him at the judgment seat of Christ. Get it fixed now. Get it. Get that sin or whatever it is that's getting in the way of you and the Lord, that's getting in the way of you if you're a man in ministry and ministry, get in the way of you being a servant to the brothers and sisters in Christ, get it out of your life. Repent, forsake. Get back your heart right with the Lord. Get back into prayer. Get back into reading the Word of God. Get back into your fellowship with the brethren. Mm -hmm. Surely the floods of the great water shall not come nigh unto him. Why did God flood the lost world? Because of sin and iniquity. You don't want God's chastisement? I'm talking about for safe sinners. You don't want His chastisement? You don't want to lose reward? Get your heart fixed with the Lord. Get your heart right with the Lord. Repent, forsake. Verse 7. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance, Salah. Now, brother, says Christ, do you have a hiding place for the, with the Lord? I know this is talking spiritually, but I'm going to stop for a second. I'm going to, I like to go for walks with the Lord on the beach, and I talk to Him about my walk, my life. Is, is my life pleasing Him? I talk to Him about His Word. I talk to Him about the brothers, the body of Christ, brothers and sisters in Christ, the condition of the mother, body of Christ, which I'm praying for a lot in these last days. Um, I talk about how bad the world is. Okay? I have a deck out here which I sit on the deck and talk with the Lord. I go for walks around here. Are there places where you can get away from everything, all the distractions, and spend some time with the Lord? Brothers and sisters in Christ. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Remember what the Bible also says. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Why? Because you don't need that temptation. You don't need those images getting stuck in your head so that one-time temptation becomes a rest-of-your-lifetime temptation because you put it in here. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Put no wicked thing before thine eyes. God will protect you from trouble, but if you don't obey God's word, you're going to get into some trouble. 
Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Brothers, this is Christ. Are you singing hymns? I sing hymns on the deck. I sing hymns on my car ride in. I'll sing hymns in the middle of a store. If I start getting tempted by something, I'll start singing a hymn. I'll start quoting some scripture in my head. And I'll start talking to the Lord about a Bible study as I'm trying to shop because there's some wickedness that I'm trying to get some food. I don't want that wickedness. I don't want that temptation. Get my food and get out. Brother says, Christ, are you singing hymns? Are you singing to the Lord? But the biggest thing, Brother says, Christ, this might not be easy. Maybe your only hiding place, because like I said, this home is the only place I have that's an abstain from all appearance of evil free place. No, put no wicked thing before thine eyes. This home is what that is. It's the only safe place. The moment I leave this house to head into town for whatever reason, pardon me, you risk... Uh, you risk, see, I've seen, sometimes I have a good trip into town to the beach and back and no problems. Some days I go to the beach and I have to turn around and leave and try to find another beach and then there's just no beaches because there's wickedness, putting a wicked thing before thine eyes. And I'm like, I guess today just wasn't one of those days, I'm going to have to head back. But you have your hiding place where you get to spend time with the Lord that you get away from everything. Honestly, my best hiding place is right there on the deck. This chair that I'm sitting on right now, I sat on the deck. I brought it in for this video. It's sitting on the deck. I sit on the deck. I listen to hymns. I sing hymns. I listen to God's Word being read by Alexander Scorby a lot, most of my times right there. Hours and hours. Just spend in my, that's my hiding place. If I could say my hiding place, that is it. I'm pointing over there. You can't see it on the other side of the camera. There's the window there. There's the deck there. Um, that's my hiding place. When I start getting tempted, I spend a lot of hours out there with the Lord. When I start getting fearful of this world or the body, fearful for the body of Christ, I get out there and start talking with the Lord. I start getting into His Word. I start getting into prayer. Verse 8, and here it is, getting in the Word of God. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. The Holy Spirit comes in and opens the, the word of God to us. Okay? That's why we're supposed to hide his word in our heart. So we know God teaches us how we're supposed to live. How we treat the lost world. How we treat our brothers and sisters in Christ. How we speak to the lost world. How we speak one to another. How we correct people. And in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. Some brethren have forgotten that. How do we, we preach the word of God also? Do we preach the word of God out of anger? Pride? Bitterness? Hate? Envy? No, what does it say? When we preach the word of God, we're supposed to preach it in sincerity and in truth. We're supposed to be sincere. It's serious. Are we supposed to be mocking? Name calling? Sarcastic? I've been sarcastic sometimes, I know, but I'm still working on it myself. Are we supposed to be sarcastic when it comes to preaching the Word of God? Are we putting on a show where we, had to, we have to throw in some jokes to get people to laugh and then get into the, into the stuff? Uh, we're supposed to preach the Word of God seriously. It's serious. In sincerity and truth. God will instruct us. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eyes. My eye. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule which have not understanding. I'll give you a good example of this. Understanding. Whose mouth must be held with a bit and bridle, lest they come near unto thee. You know a good example of this? Nebuchadnezzar. You're like, Nebuchadnezzar? Nebuchadnezzar, remember what the Bible said, Nebuchadnezzar, my servant. This is a lost man. He's a type of antichrist. And yet, how did God get him to do what he wanted him to do? Like a horse and a bridle, because Nebuchadnezzar didn't want to do it. He didn't. He didn't want to submit to the, 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 the Most High God. We're not supposed to be like Nebuchadnezzar. And for the start, I want to throw this in there. There's some brethren, I've heard that there's some brethren that are trying to teach that Nebuchadnezzar was saved. No, he was not. Nebuchadnezzar's a lost man in hell right now. What did we just talk about when it comes to, blessed is the man whom, 
it says, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. In the Old Testament, in order to have your sins covered, there has to be shedding of blood. When did Nebuchadnezzar ever do animal sacrifices to the Lord Most High? He never did. He acknowledged the Lord Most High, but he, like what we just read there about a horse, but, but be not as the horse or as the mule, which have not understanding, whose mouth must be held in a bit. When you have a bit in a horse's mouth, you're forcing him to go this way, you're forcing him to go that way. We're not supposed to be like that. God says, go over here, we go over there. He doesn't have to force us. We want to do the will of God. And that's also in the Psalms where David's talking about his love is for the will of God. In thy law I meditate both day and night. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. He loves God's will. He loves God's word. So when God says do this, he, he does it willingly. He wants to do it. You know that's the mark of someone who's truly saved? God says that you're not supposed to do that. Oh, it's gone. God says you're supposed to do this. Okay, I need to start doing it. And so on and so far. They have that heartfelt desire. They want to do God's will. They want to do things God's way. But I come across those people, brothers and Christ, that profess to be saved. And it's like pulling teeth. You know what that saying? It's like pulling teeth. It's like a bit in their mouth. You have to try and say, hey, you're not living right. You're not doing right. You don't line up with this book. Brothers and sisters Christ, is that you? Are you having to be led around by God in a bit? Is He chastising you and smacking you around all the time trying to get you to do what He wants you to do? Do things His way. It's not supposed to be that way. God says abstain from all appearance of evil. You do your best to abstain from all appearance of evil. Okay, be not drunken. Okay, uh, so many other things. We're not supposed to be as those horses with the bridle in our mouth. That's, that's like I said, I use Nebuchadnezzar because that's the best example that God puts on my heart. He was, he was a, uh, my servant, Nebuchadnezzar. He was a lost man, and he was a servant. You can read in the Old Testament uh, where some kings came together and tried to get, uh, I forgot the prophet, but tried to get this prophet to curse the Jewish people. Okay. Nothing happens, brother says Christ, nothing happens on this world, and God looks at it and goes, oh, I didn't want that to happen. Oh, no. Everything that we see happening today when it comes to the lost world and everything, everything's coming together for the time of Jacob's trouble, the catching away of the body of Christ can be any day now. Are you ready? But we can look. God's the one bringing this all about. Yeah. Okay. He's bringing it about. And he's using that bit. That's how he's bringing it about. That bit in the lost world's mouth. Like a horse. Forcing, okay, I want you over here. I'm trying to put everything right. Okay, we're almost ready for the time of Jacob's trouble. Moving every, all the pieces. Okay. God's the one doing it. They try to give Satan the credit. They try to say, they give man the credit. But they don't give God the credit. But in our personal walk with Jesus Christ, brothers and Christ, we're not supposed to be like that. We're supposed to. God says, don't do that. Don't do that. God says, this is how you correct somebody, then this is how you correct somebody. Your heartfelt desire is to do things God's way, His will in your life. You want God's will in your life, and you know what gets in the way of God's will in your life? Your will. You need to drop your will, your so-called rights, free rights to choose and do what you want, when you want. You need to get rid of all that and say, Lord, Thy will be done. Not my will, Thy will be done. Verse 10, many sorrows shall be to the wicked. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. Now remember what I said before, brother says Christ, the word fool, a fool has said in his heart there is no God. The word fool is used for someone who's lost, that's against God. But the word foolish, foolish means that you are acting like someone who's lost and against God. And when you start, as a brother or sister Christ, when you start acting foolish, that's when the sorrows come in. That's when you lose that peace that God gave you. When you start losing that joy that God gave you. When, you, like, Peter, uh, like uh, King David was talking about up here, that just to sweat and everything, just you're miserable. Oh yeah, 
Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. Brothers, this is Christ. Get it repented. Get it forsaken. Get your heart right with the Lord. Get back to your walk with the Lord. But he that trusteth in the Lord, if God says it's wrong, it's wrong. If God says this is how you're supposed to be doing something, that's how you're supposed to be doing something. Do you trust the Lord? But he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. God will forgive you, Brother Christ. He's forgiven me. Time and time again, he saved me in this life as a saved sinner. He saved me time and time again. He's rescued me from myself. I think the worst, I've said this before in a testimony, the worst time periods in my life as a Christian, a real Christian according to the scriptures, a Bible-believing, God-fearing man, the worst times in my life was because I tripped and fell. I went to the left, I went to the right. I decided I can do things my way. Oh, God will forgive me. I, it's not that big of a deal. I can fall back into some old sins, old te it, uh, temptations, um, addictions, and whatnot. Like I told you, when I got saved, I struggled off and on with Hollywood movies, TV show, video games, and porn. It took several years for God to get that out of my life. I went through some very hard times, and my hardest times in my life as a Christian, when I look back, it's when I decided I'm going to do things my way. And I went off to the left or the right. And what happened? Sorrow. Now, brothers, is Christ. Do you trust the Lord? Right now, I'm fighting people that are against the King James Bible as God's perfect written word, and they don't have a per perfect replacement for it. Do you trust the Lord? I, I believe in a perfect God, therefore his word is perfect. And he said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall not pass away. Do you trust the Lord? When you see what's going on in the world today, brothers and Christ, do you trust the Lord? God knows what he's doing. I'm not supposed to let this world change me. I'm here to try to be a light to this dark world. Some brethren have turned their back on the eminent return of Jesus Christ. And they need to repent. They need to fall on their knees and repent. They've taken their eyes off Jesus Christ. They put it on the world. And now the world's starting to dictate how they live. Not Jesus Christ. Do you trust the Lord? But he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall accompany, compass him about. I want God's mercy. I want God's mercy for you, brothers, says Christ. Some of the brethren that I've, that I've broken fellowship with, that we've you know, gone our separate ways, I want God's mercy on them. I don't want them to be destroyed utterly. I don't pray for the destruction of my enemies. I pray, I put them in God's hand. And I pray that God gives them every opportunity, if it's a brother in Christ that's acting like an enemy, I pray that God gives them every opportunity to repent, get his heart right with the Lord, and make amends to said brethren. Okay? The fellowship gets back together. We all get back on the same page, striving together. But God is merciful, brother, says Christ. He will forgive you. If I'm talking to a brother in Christ that's Falling to the left or falling to the right. And you think you're hiding it. I might not know about it. But God does. You're not using guile against God. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. When you try to hide sin from God, you're, you're trying to mock God. Whatever you sow, that shall you also reap. God can forgive. His mercies endureth forever and ever. Verse 11, be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous. Be glad in the Lord. Not the flesh, not the world, not Satan, definitely not Satan, but those are the three enemies. Not your own will, that's the flesh. Because oftentimes when people's, when your will gets in the way, it's not really your soul's will. Because when you get saved, you love the Lord, you want to do things God's way. What happens is you end up giving in to the will of the flesh. And your will of the flesh seems to supersede God's will. Sometimes the, the, your flesh's will is to please others over pleasing God. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous, and shout for joy all ye that are upright in heart. 
It comes back to the heart, brother says Christ. It comes back to the heart. I've said this before. There are times where I sit and I talk with the Lord about salvation. It's not because I'm lost. Because I need to remember all the time everything that Jesus Christ did for me. Why I got saved, why I needed to get saved, who it is that saved me, and who it is I serve. Remember what the Bible says, you were bought with a price, you are not your own. Okay. Feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. I thank God a lot in these last days. I look around, I'm trying to reach. I, I did a testimony on how some, uh, it's, it's hard to witness today for Jesus Christ because people have this perverted idea of a Jesus Christ that has no basis in Scripture, and we're having to break through all those walls to try to reach him for the real Jesus Christ. Paul had that same problem in his day. Remember what Paul said? He's talking about how if somebody comes along and he's preaching another Jesus, he's preaching another gospel, which we have not preached, or getting people to receive another spirit, that Antichrist spirit, which we have not received. Okay, he had that happening in his day. He's trying to preach truth, and here comes someone along preaching false, a false Jesus, a false gospel, getting people to get the, receive an Antichrist spirit. And we're trying to break through those walls today. Brothers and sisters, we're trying to break through those walls. Be glad in the Lord, and rejoice ye righteous, and shout for joy all ye that are upright in heart. Brothers and sisters, Christ, I'll say it again. My prayer for you is that you stay in prayer. This is your final authority. You stay not just reading it, but you study it, and you hide it in your heart, and you live it. And when you fall to the left, or you fall to the right, let God pick you back up, because He will. Let him pick you up. Repent. Forsake. Get your heart right with the Lord. I just wanted the brethren to know, and we're going to end this, I just wanted the brethren to know that that's what we mean by no, uh, when we talk about these false converts, and we say, hey, when we talk to them about sin, where's the conviction? Where's this attitude that Paul, or Paul, uh, King David had when he was in sin? When his heart wasn't right with God, it was hor he just it was like horrible. Where's that conviction? Where's that fear of God? And that's what we keep bringing up, brothers and Christ. Where's the conviction? Where's the fear of God? So, brothers and Christ, hopefully this Bible reading has helped you. And when we're done here, get back to prayer and get back to your own studies and reading the Word of God. Get back to the whole point, real quick, of um the bread and the wine, doing communion, is your develop. You look at your life as a Christian and you compare it to this. Not man's will, not the world, not the flesh's will, not the world's will, not Satan's will. You compare it to God's will. How do you? How is your walk with the Lord going, brothers of Christ? That's the whole point of doing communion. Is saying, what am I still doing wrong, Lord? What do I still need to get out of my life? Lord, is there things that I haven't been doing that I should be doing? Lord, do I need a, go a gospel tract a little bit more? Do I need to do this a little bit more? Do I need to pray more? Do I need to be reading more? That's the whole point of doing communion, brother says Christ. So take it seriously. I love my brother says Christ. I love you, brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'm saying this out of love. You got something that's getting in the way of your walk with the Lord that's getting in the way of your fellowship with the brethren, getting in the way of your prayer, with your walk with the Lord, getting in the way of your prayer, Bible reading, Bible studying, and living a life of Christ, keeping your eyes on Jesus Christ, that blessed hope. Get it fixed. Get it right with the Lord. He's merciful. He's faithful to forgive. So we'll end this with grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.